Hey everybody, so today we're going to be going over fully responsive power apps. So in order to create a Canvas app that can go from mobile, desktop, iPad, pretty much any width and still have responsive elements within it. So just to jump into it, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how this is done. So we're going to be doing this with containers. So as you can see right now, we have a blue container, which represents the main container, which holds these gray containers. There's two, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the property of the container layout and use a condition to give the orientation, right? So given this main container, if the width is greater than a certain uh, than a certain amount, then the layout is going to be horizontal of this gray container. So and these elements on the inside are going to be horizontal. If the container is less than a certain width, then the layout is going to be vertical. And then these two are going to be stacked on top of each other and these two are going to be stacked upon each other. All right, so now we're in the Power Apps environment. We're gonna click Create. We're gonna use a blank Canvas app, and this is important, we're gonna use Tablet. So I'm gonna call this Responsive Demo. Okay, create. Okay, so now that we got this environment here, we're gonna have to configure this setting. This is super important. We have to go to Settings. Then we're gonna have to go here, General Display. And where it says scale the fit, we're going to turn it off. So make sure scale the fit is turned off. We're going to close that. And now we're ready to start developing. So we're going to throw a container. We're going to throw a first the vertical container, which is going to be that blue one. So we're going to make sure the width of that container is equal. Okay, let me grab the container again. We're gonna make sure that width is equal to app dot width. Great, so that takes up the whole page. And we're gonna make sure the height is equal to app dot height. Great, so now that takes the whole thing. And just so we can reference it correctly, I'm gonna change the color to that blue. Great, so now we have that container. Now inside of that, we're gonna throw in two horizontal containers. So this is one horizontal container right here too. We're gonna put that one as the color light gray. Great, and then we're gonna click on container one. Actually, we're gonna click on screen, container two, copy it, put in container one and paste it. So now we have two blocks here. So just so we can reference it better, I'm gonna put padding 25, 25, 25, 25, and then between them, I'm gonna put also 25. Great. So I want this one, I want this one to be a lot smaller since it's gonna be a header. So instead of filling half a portion, I'm gonna make sure it fills 0 0.25 of a portion. Great. So now inside of that, we're gonna throw two containers. And it doesn't matter if they're horizontal or vertical because the only thing that's going to change is this gray layout. But let's just do vertical for both. Vertical. And then we're going to copy it and put it in container 2. Okay, so now you see there's two boxes here. And just the same thing we did in container 2. We're going to throw a padding. We're going to do the same 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And then the gap is going to be, let's say, 10 also. And then these are going to change to that light, light blue color that we first saw. So it's going to go here. It's going to go here. Great. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing here. This one is going to be also horizontal. And then we're going to make sure that this property has the same 10, 10. And then the gap is also going to be 10. And then we're going to just click on that, copy it, click on the one, the gray one, and then paste it. So now we can see the same setup. This is going to be also smaller, so we're going to make this 0 0.33. Okay, perfect. So now we got what we wanted. And we're going to stop here. All right, so now we're going to throw in elements into the containers. Before we do that, I want to make sure my containers are aligned. I'm going to make that everything that goes in here to the middle and the center. Same thing here. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use two text boxes. So text label and let's say text label. Let's make sure this one 
is the full width. And let's make sure this one's the full width. And let's just align these two to the center. So that is here. Let's align this to the center. Great. So now text text. This can be whatever you want it to be. And now here, let's make sure we align it as well. And then we're gonna align it as well. Actually, I want from the top here, and here I want it from the top. Now we're gonna throw in a gallery. Let's do a vertical gallery. And given the setup, I don't want an image, I just want a title. Great. So now we have that one, and we have to make sure it's a flexible width and the flexible height. So that way it just fills up the container that's currently in the container for you too. So here I also want a gallery. This one I'll make it full with the image and everything. And this one automatically sets up as that. Great. And we're gonna make sure the minimum height here is 100. And we're gonna make sure the minimum height here is zero, that's fine. Minimum height here, what is it? Minimum width, height 40. Let's say the minimum width of this container is, let's say, 100 as well. Let's say the minimum width of this container is 100 as well. So now, let's see what happens. So it's still not dynamic, right? These are still vertical. And now we got to play with the layout here. So let's just make sure that this container also has a decent minimum width, 250 to 100. And then this one should be around the same too. 250 and 100 great so now the condition the only condition we're going to put is here in the center we're clicking on the container 2 which is the one that has these two in it so we're going to go here and we're going to find the layout so we're going to go here layout direction great so the condition is if parent dot width width is greater than 750 I choose 750 because it's a little bit more than an iPhone and it's around the size of a small iPad. So I think that's a good breaking point for the vertical. And then you can go layout direction vertical. So if it's greater than 750 horizontal and if it's less than it's vertical, we're going to copy the same condition and we're going to put it here in the other one. So container to one, which is the one on the bottom, we're going to find that same property and we're going to go to layout direction and we're going to just copy that. Perfect. So now let's see how let's see what happens. Now if I go to my phone, let's see iPhone 12. Boom. Vertical, 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 vertical. There's still some issues. I don't get to see the other one. I'm gonna have to do with the height here. So let's see what the minimum height is. Let's say the minimum height is 50. And let's see here the minimum height is also 50. 50 and 50. Now let's see what happens. Perfect. Now we can see the text. We switch to iPad. We can go back to uh, horizontal. If we go to phone. We go back to vertical and if we go to canvas size it goes back to horizontal so that's that's pretty much how it works i can publish this and tell you exactly in the browser wait a second but uh so essentially you get the point it goes from this yeah now you have a vertical layout here and if you switch it back to ipad then you have a horizontal layout and that's pretty much how it goes